Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today's topic is going to be something I hold near and dear to my heart. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, my favorite video game company, Nintendo, and specifically going to be talking about the Nintendo Entertainment System, which came out here in the States in 1985. Uh, so for those of you who know me really well, I'm a big video game buff, kind of have been since the you know time I was a little kid, uh, since I first got the Atari joystick in my hand. Uh, you know, and I also grew up in the arcade, so I talked about that in previous videos. Um, but, you know, my all-time favorite console still to this day has to be the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, for those of you not familiar, you know, the video game boom kind of happened in the late 70s, early 80s. You know, there was Atari, there was Coleco, uh, there was Intellivision, but there were a lot of other companies. And, you know, before you know it, it just got flooded and the market completely crashed and almost disappeared off the face of the earth as far as the you know, American way of life was uh you know and then here comes this japanese company out of nowhere in 1985 releases nintendo and just kind of reinvigorated and saved the video game industry hundreds of thousands of jobs who knows you know how much uh how much they help nintendo had been around uh now it's going on like a hundred something years um they they originally kind of started as like a playing card company and then you know gradually turned into this video game giant uh you know they're one of the the big three uh, between PlayStation and Xbox, not as uh, popular amongst, you know, younger people uh, these days, you know, the younger kids, they want the gory, violent, super realistic graphics, uh, you know, my generation, we grew up, we, we care about gameplay, you know, uh, you know, graphics are nice, but, you know, if the game is fun, that that's the bottom line, you know, so, uh, you know, I was a little kid when Nintendo came out, um, whereas Atari was kind of like my first introduction to video games, uh, you know, and I love the Atari 2600 and, and so many of those games like I talked about in a previous video. Nintendo uh, and the Nintendo Entertainment System specifically is what really kind of cemented it for me. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, if you guys have been enjoying my videos, please subscribe to my channel. You know, hit the little notification bell up there so you'll be the first to know if I post something new. Uh, you know, if you like this video, you know, like, like it, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, comment about it if you were... An NES fan growing up, if there was a certain game you liked that I'm not going to cover today, because uh, I mean there's 700 of them, I can't cover all of them. I'm just kind of going over like a little smaller, uh, you know, uh, cross section of them. Uh, you know, if you want to talk about that, you know, leave a comment and uh, let's let's get started. So, uh, like I said, you know, uh, had an Atari 2600 when I was a little kid, uh, very very young. I mean, you know, maybe two three years old. I started playing video games and that and, and the arcades and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, as I got older, uh, I was still playing them, but, you know, I was still playing with my G.I. Joes and Transformers and whatnot, you know. Uh, but then, I don't remember if it was, like, for Christmas that year or right around that time, uh, you know, uh, whether it was my grandparents, my parents, I don't know. Somebody got me a Nintendo Entertainment System. And it, like, blew my mind at the time. Because, you know, Atari, you had the, you had the joystick with one button. And here came a joystick with, like, a bunch of buttons and up and down and left and right and you know, uh, graphics like light years ahead of Atari. Atari, you had the one little dot, you kind of had to use your imagination, you know, and Nintendo had very vivid 8-bit uh, graphics, you know, and uh, it, it just a big contrast, you know, and when you're a kid, you're just like, wow, man, you know. Um, like I said, the Nintendo Entertainment System brought the video game industry back from the brink, uh, you know, sold insane amounts all over the world, kind of well-known, um, you know, and there were just so many games. I mean, there's like seven, eight hundred official games, you know, between the ones that were released here in the United States and then ones released over in Europe, uh, you know, some that were exclusive to Japan. You've got tons and tons of what they call ROM hacks where people, you know, take a game and kind of alter it, uh, you know, or people create their own. They call them homebrews. Uh, but, you know, so many classic games. I mean, just so many memories as a kid. You know, you'd go to the video store. Uh, you young kids ask an older person what that is, you know, and you could rent the game for the weekend, uh, you know, you, you trade them with your friends, whatnot, you know, uh, there was the famous thing where if it wasn't working, you had to take it out, everybody kind of knew the trick, you blew on it, you know, put it back in the system and, and cranked it up, you know, so uh, just, just a lot of positive memories associated with, with N Nintendo in general, but especially with the Nintendo Entertainment System, I mean, I'm out of all the video game systems uh, and companies, Nintendo is, you know, far and above my favorite, as you can tell by my t-shirt here and some of my little Nintendo memorabilia that's that's sitting up there on the shelf, you know. Uh, Nintendo is just, it, like I said, I've always enjoyed just the fun of the games. I don't care if they got the best graphics or, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's about the fun. It's about the experience of playing games. So, uh, you know, NES comes out, 
and just kind of blew the whole scene up, you know. Uh, it was included, uh, the, the launch game was, you know, Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt were the two games that, that launched with it. Uh, you know, and then there was also, um, uh, what the heck was it called? Uh, the one with Rob the Robot, that was like the gimmicky little thing that, that came with him. Uh, not Stack Up, Gy Gyromite. Gyromite is one of the other launch games, which I, I, never, I have Gyromite, but I never had Rob the Robot, you know. Uh, but... Super Mario Brothers, you know, I love that. That's like the iconic, when you think of NES, that's the first game you think of is Super Mario Brothers, you know. Just the iconic, the music, the graphics, the gameplay. Uh, I mean, it still stands the test of time, 35 years later, you know. Still still one of the greatest games ever created. Um, you know, Duck Hunt, uh, it, it, was, it was okay. I mean, for the technology, you had the little ray gun and you'd, you know, shoot ducks as, as they came up, and you had that stupid annoying dog that would laugh at you when you missed, and you'd love to blow his head off, but you couldn't, you know. Um, but, you know, as as the years went on, there were so many amazing games that came out of that era. You know, uh, games made by Nintendo, games made by all these other companies, uh, you know, long-running series that got their start over there. You know, for example, I mean, The Legend of Zelda is another just absolute legend in the video game industry, you know, one of the all-time classics, one of the longest-running series, you know, every couple of years or so they release a new one, but, you know, the original Legend of Zelda came out there, and I remember I got that as a kid mesmerized, I mean, like, my mind was blown, it was just so good, you know, uh, it came out with a sequel, Zelda 2, which I didn't like as much as a kid, but, you know, now that I've gotten a lot older, I appreciate it a lot more, uh, different style game, whereas the original Legend of Zelda was, like, Top down is what they call you're looking down and you know you're walking around that one was what they call side scrolling left left to right and uh you know but good introduction to adventure games and things like that um you know another one of the most famous ones well known metroid you're uh, a female bounty hunter in the future uh you know going to this planet trying to wipe out a, a, a deadly species of, of uh creature i don't know what the hell you would call a metroid you know um I mean, you had games like Kid Icarus, where you were uh, you were a little angel called Pit. You had to rescue Angel Land from like Medusa and all these other you know demons. Um, they had the arcade, ver well, the arcade had the version of the game called Kung Fu. Nintendo had their own version. You know, it wasn't as good as the arcade, but it was still pretty good. You're, you know, your little Chinese, Japanese guy, whatever. You know, um, you know, you do your Kung Fu to rescue the princess that's been captured. Um, there was one. That I like called Wrecking Crew, where it was like one or two players, where you're basically Mario, like on a construction site with all different layouts, and you could, you know, you basically got to destroy the place and avoid little enemies. So that that was always cool. Um, Nintendo had uh, a lot of a lot of ports of like famous arcade games. You know, there was one that I used to like back in the day called Spy Hunter, that was really good. Uh, you know, it wasn't as good as the arcade, obviously, because they still hadn't the technology still wasn't there, but it was a lot better than it had been for Atari. You know. Uh, spy hunter, you're like a little, uh, basically you're a spy hunter. You're, you're a spy that's, you know, hunting other spies, you know, so you're, it's a driving game, but you're shooting, uh, you know, you're, you've got a little oil slick, you know, you're basically racing, shooting, you know, avoiding enemies and whatnot. Um, another one I really liked was elevator action. You would kind of, uh, rappel down into the building and you had to get from the roof to the, to the bottom floor. And, you know, it was kind of the same thing like spy versus spy sort of thing uh, that that was really cool um akari warriors w was another one i liked uh, i used to play that a lot as, as a kid at the arcades with my cousin where it was like you know two rambo looking dudes you get dropped you, your, your plane crashes on an island and it's basically you against this entire army you know and, and uh, so that that was really cool that it, nowhere is near as good as the arcade version it just like but you know we didn't know any better we were kids we, we really liked it you know uh, Commando was another one like that, where it's um, basically one man against an army, you know, kind of Rambo-esque type of thing. Um, you know, but there was also so many, um, so many like classic, classic adventure series that came out during the time. Mega Man, every, everybody kind of knows Mega Man, you know, um, got its start there. You had you had Mega Man one through six was on the original Nintendo, and then as they came into the Super Nintendo era, um, which was, you know, the next system after that, uh, in the early 90s, you know, the series went on, and then there was an offshoot called Mega Man X, and just a, a long-running series, but that that's one of my uh, f favorite series of all time. Extreme difficulty. That That's the thing about video games back in the day. There's a few, there's a few series nowadays that, that just have that, like, extreme difficulty frustration thing going on, 
but the birth of it was kind of Atari, that era, and, and the Mega Man series. Um, one that I absolutely love, one of my favorite NES games of all time, was called Bionic Commando. Uh, basically, it's sort of like a quasi-sequel to Commando, where the guy who was the main character in Commando gets captured, and you're fighting this, uh, not a group of terrorists, but like, you know, uh, from some, I don't know, how to, Basically, the, the, this country's, you know, rogue army, and, and they drop you into this place, but you can't jump, you know, you just have, like, a, a grappling hook, so you can use that to, uh, you can use that to swing around, to pick up items, climb up and down, uh, but, like, classic gameplay, classic music, uh, you know, the music is so underappreciated in this time frame, uh, the little 8-bit tunes, you can go on YouTube and, and look them up, you know, and just, just do a search, and they're just, they're just amazing, I love them, I got some on my phone that I'll, I'll listen to from time to time just like not only the nostalgia but it's just a cool little sound to it like the, the people who composed the music for these games so so talented back in that time you know um another big series that um i, w I, I was a fan of it. i wasn't the biggest fan of it but uh, castlevania where basically you're a vampire hunter and you're going after dracula and you know there was th there was three games on the nes uh, i personally liked the second one uh, it was my favorite because it was a little more role-playing, sort of. Uh, most people like the first game and the third game, which are good, but again, really hard, you know. So the second one wasn't as hard. It was just a little more complicated. Um, what's another one? Uh, I, I know I'm tending to stick to shooters, but I, I, I'm going to move beyond that. You know, Contra is, is another famous one. Here is another Rambo-esque, you know, two guys dropped into the tropical island and you have to you have to liberate it from these aliens, you know. Um, that, that was just one of the all-time... Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start is, is the code to give yourself 30 lives. Everybody kind of knows that if you know anything about the Contra series. Uh, there was a few of them on the NES, but really the first one is the, is the only one that I really uh, played that often that I really liked. Um, I'm trying to think of some other stuff. Uh, Metal Gear, the, the, another all-time classic. Like, one of the most convoluted stories <laughs> in a video game series. Like, it's really out there, like, sci-fi-ish kind of out there. Um... But, you know, there was a game before that on one of the Japanese systems, uh, but that was the first one that made it across here to America and, you know, spawned the, the, the long-running series, uh, Solid Snake. There's a lot of, like, intrigue, a lot of, uh, you know, CIA, behind-the-scenes government doing a lot of evil stuff, and the fallout from that is, is kind of the theme of that series. Um, there was an arcade game that made its way to the home console called Rygar, where you're uh, sort of like a um, an ancient, I don't know if he was supposed to be Roman or Greek or whatever, but like an ancient warrior fighting, you know, demons, and you got this little shield that you can kind of, that, that's your weapon, you like throw this, sh this shield buzzsaw kind of thing out. Um, Strider was another one uh, that that's like a, a ninja, sort of, sort of like a ninja game uh, with sci-fi and Japanese elements mixed in, where you're kind of going all over the globe. Uh, it was set at that time in the, you know, the futuristic year of 2000-something, you know, but this is back in the 80s, you know, back in the 80s, uh, you know, they thought we'd have flying cars in 2015, which, you know, unfortunately we don't, we have a lot of other crap <laughs> that we don't want, um, you know, uh, there, there was a, a few of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games on there, there was an arcade one, uh, th that was the second one, I, I like that one a lot, you know, not, again, not, not as good as the arcade, but you, you, you can't blame them, like, they did the best they could, they couldn't quite mimic it yet. Now, you know, arcades don't really exist, but if they did, you know, they're able to mimic it. The, the, the technology's there enough that they could mimic it on the home systems if they wanted. But, um, you know, G.I. Joe had, had two games. Um, maybe where I grew up in New York, they were very rare, very hard to find. Uh, you know, if you if you did find them, it'd be like a flea market and it'd be super expensive. But they, they were pretty good games. Uh, you know, Goonies uh, from the classic movie, that the 80s movies that I love. Um the first Goonies game was only in Japan. We got the second one, which was sort of like your Mikey trying to rescue the Goonies from the Fratellis. Um, but it was extremely convoluted. You know, this is long before the internet, before you could just Google and look up something. Like, you had to figure stuff out back in the day. You know, there was no strategy guide. There was no guidebook. You know, you just... And I just remember, like, going back, if you try to play it now, you, you need some kind of guide. Like trying to figure it out is, is, is crazy like this uh but you know, just a good what they call action platformer with you know jumps and and side by side and fighting people and whatnot um another one i liked was kind of uh sort of like a weird sci-fi story it was called blaster master um 
basically you're a kid with a pet frog and the frog somehow I don't know gets into some mutated acid slime thing and grows huge and he falls down in this hole in the earth so you jump down there to find him and you find like a tank and you know uh, you're in this underworld thing so you suit up and you're you know, in this tank fighting all these weird creatures of the underworld, uh, you know, you could get out of the tank, you could swim, that, that, that was kind of cool, um, there was a great Batman game on that, based on, uh, on the original 89, original, but uh, on the 89 Batman movie that I really liked, um, you know, video games, they, they do have a tendency to have a lot of movie licensed games, which are usually completely garbage, you know, it's just a quick, uh, crappy game to cash in on, on the popularity of, of a movie at the time, but that was really a, a one of the better uh, Batman games out there. And even though it was, you know, made by a company kind of notorious for that kind of stuff, um, it, it was a pretty good game. Um, they had a ton of Simpsons games on the, on the NES. Uh, you know, I, I liked The Simpsons when it first came out 30-something years ago. I was a little kid. You know, I watched, like, the first three, four seasons, and I, and I really enjoyed it. But the games really weren't that good. Um, you know, they were purposely hard. Controls were kind of wonky, you know, but uh, there was at least three or four of them on there. I, I just remember the first one was sort of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a tribute sort of like to the old 50s sci-fi horror movies with like the alien invasion. So that that was pretty good. Um, there was a, a, a Star Trek game on there that I really liked, uh, which the graphics for that time were like phenomenal. I mean, it was amazing. It kind of like blew a lot of the other stuff on the system out of the water. It was Star Trek's 25th anniversary, so it was like they, they made a game based on the original series, you know, Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Scotty, Uhura, uh, Chekhov, Sulu, all like the famous, you know, characters of the original Star Trek that everybody knows and loves. Um, there was a very, very difficult series, much like the Mega Man series called Ninja Gaiden. That had been an arcade game, but these were like based on that. They're like their own story notoriously hard i mean like throw your controller through the tv screen hang yourself with the wire hard um good games awesome music but like super frustrating i mean i had the first one i could never really get through it it was so damn i, I could barely get through the first level you know but i mean if, if you enjoyed the challenge that they were fun um one that i really liked um was called oh excuse me guys uh, rescue the embassy mission basically you know, there's a, an embassy in some nation that, that terrorists take over, and you got like a three-man crew. One guy's the sniper outside, you know, one guy's up on uh, running the street, you know, he has to like avoid the spotlight so he can find a place to hide, and then you have the guy that will rappel off the roof and enter the building, and you got to try to, you know, uh, k kill all the terrorists without killing the, um, without killing any of the hostages, and you kind of like switch on the fly back and forth between them, so that, that was really cool. Um, this was what the era that some of the what, what they called beat em ups came around. Um, beat em ups were not so much like the the, the one on one fighters like Mortal Kombat and, and Street Fighter. These were like you were a team. Like du Double Dragon is one of the most famous ones. You know that that got a home port. Um, you know it wasn't because of the arcade because it was like a one player game, whereas the arcade was was a two player game that my cousin and I used to play the crap out of as a kid. We we loved that game. Uh, but yeah, basically like two people versus, like, a gang in, in the city, and you gotta, like, beat the entire gang to, you know, to free the city, save your girlfriend, whatever, you know, um, but there was also one that I got, like, uh, on, on clearance for 10 bucks, uh, at, at KB Toy Stores one time, um, and it became one of the all-time favorite video games I've ever played, it was called River City Ransom, um, it's from a long-standing Japanese series, we got maybe three or four out of, like, the 20 games in this series or whatever, but same thing like Double Dragon, kind of, like, two people against this whole entire city to rescue your girlfriend. Uh, but it just had a lot of elements of, like, humor and role-playing, whereas Double Dragon was was a little bit more serious. This was just kind of, like, humorous and, and everything, but I, I, I love that. Uh, I, I, I'm not a big fan of role-playing games, uh, you know, like the Dungeon Dragon types games. Uh, now, they, they, they do translate those. There are video games. Um, there's two different kinds. There's, like, the uh, Western ones, which which are the two games that I like that I'm going to talk about really quickly because I'm, I'm approaching the 20 minute mark here and I want to just close it out uh, with, with sports games real quick. And then there's like the Japanese role playing games where it's like you pick and you move and you pick and you move. So it's not like real time. Uh, but the, the ones that I don't, I don't really like those, they, they bore me too much, too complicated. But uh, I like the Western style role playing games and one that I really love. Uh, was called Dragon Warrior. It was an adaption of, of, of a Japanese series, but you know, basically, you're you're the the lonely little knight, and you have to free the land 
of, you know, the evil sorcerer or the dragon, rescue the princess, whatever. You know, the games back then were kind of simpler. The, the, the story wasn't as, as, as deep as, as it is nowadays. Um, and then there was one called F Faxanadu, where you're, like, going through the Tree of Life. Uh, again, another Japanese series. It was, like, the only one that made it across the, the pond here to the U.S. Um, I'm not quite sure the, the details of the whole thing, you know, but uh, it was a pretty good game, you know. The only one that made it to the to the U.S. Nintendo, I guess, you know, the Japanese got a, got a couple different versions of it, but a pretty good, you know, fun little side-scrolling role-playing game, Knights in the, you know, fantasy, that kind of stuff, which isn't really my cup of tea, but this particular one was good. So, all right, um, just about hit the 20-minute mark here, so let me kind of hurry this up and wrap it up with uh, one of my favorite types of, uh, you know, NES games was the sports games. They had so many great sports games back in the day. I mean, one of my all-time favorite games, because I'm not a big football fan. I've never really been, uh, you know, and as a kid, I sort of cared about the Jets and Giants because I, I grew up there in New York, and it was, you know, always on TV. My grandfather used to watch, but I, I never really took a huge liking to American football, but um, Tech Mobile. Um, anybody who knows video games from that era is going to know Tech Mobile. Like, the most fun football game, okay, not necessarily the most realistic but the most fun football game, like just pick up and play and have a blast of all time. You know, um, to this day, I'll still play Tech Mobile if I have a chance. I mean, I, I just, I love that game. Um, you know, the sequel after sequel where it got more realistic and more simulation size. Uh, and it just, nothing to me beats the fun of the pick up and play arcade. Right? When I say arcade, I mean, you know, not just fun, not, not so much trying to emulate real life. Um, you know, uh, another one I like was double dribble. Again, basketball, another sport I'm, I really don't have any interest in. Uh, you know, I'm tall, but I have no <laughs> no skill in it. You know, I would always get picked in school. You know, oh, he's a tall kid. He can play basketball. Like, no, I can't. I, I suck. I don't have any skill. But uh, <clears throat> that was a good basketball game. Uh, we used to play a lot as kids. You know, uh, baseball stars. There was tons and tons and tons of baseball games on the NES. But uh, that, that was probably my favorite. That's another one that, that came over from Japan. A little bit more simulated uh great well a good balance between like you know the pick up and play arcade and like the role playing simulation side of baseball where you could kind of create your team create your players build them up a little bit but the actual gameplay was like super tight it was it was awesome um you know blades of steel was a, a hockey game hockey you know i i love i mean nintendo had their own little ice hockey game but it was not 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 as realistic blades of steel was slightly more realistic uh, but, you know, great, uh, great graphics, great music, fun to play, you know, had fighting in it and stuff. Um, you know, boxing is something I don't really have an interest in, but there was two classic all-time games on, on the NES. There was Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, which, you know, when Mike Tyson got into some legal trouble, they changed it to, uh, you know, just Punch-Out. But, you know, just a fun game you're playing as this little character, little Mac, you know, the little underdog, the little scrawny dude from... Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, wherever the heck he was from, little, you know, 100-pound soaking wet guy fighting all these big beasts, you know, in boxing. So that that was a lot of fun. Uh, and then, of course, um, Ring King. So if you guys are not familiar, and, you know, if, if a lot of people I think are watching this, you're, you're probably not. Ring King was this awesome uh, boxing game. But they kind of slipped something by the censorship at that time. <laughs> um and in between the rounds, you know, where I guess, I don't know what the, exactly they do to the boxers in between the rounds, but it's a little risque. If you if you Google a video or watch a video of this on YouTube, you could probably um, see what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to explain without you seeing it. And once you see it, you don't unsee it kind of thing. Um, but that was a great, uh, that, that was a great boxing game. It was just like a lot of, you know, again, not really super realistic because you had all these crazy knockout punches and stuff like that but th but that was a lot of fun um i'm not a big racing game fan but uh nintendo had one called excite bike just a, a motorcycle racing game but it was cool because not only did you have the pre-programmed courses you could actually make your own and make it as chaotic as you wanted you know it's another long running series they, they don't make as many of them but you know just another one uh and one of the last ones i want to talk about and before i wrap it up here was a game called rc pro-am uh you know on the Nintendo system, but made by a company named Rare, uh, which made a lot of classic Nintendo games over the years before they got bought out by Microsoft, one of their competitors. Um, just a, a really fun racing game, sort of simulation-ish, you know, where you had to pick, you want to have, you know, better traction with your tires, faster engine, whatever. Uh, but you, but you kind of shoot the other, you know, you had like missiles and bombs and stuff like that. So 
Anyway, guys, it, it, like I said, I can't sit here and talk about 800 different video games, but that was just kind of me covering my favorite games from that era. You know, I just, I, I, I was kind of a socially awkward kid. I, I, I didn't have a lot of friends, but I had, the few friends I had were very tight-knit, you know. Um, but a lot of my time as a kid was was spent playing video games. You know, I was kind of kind of a loner there for a while. And NES, I just associate with so many nostalgic memories, so many positive times in my life. But, but, well, let me take that back. So many, uh, the, the ability to take my mind off of the negative things that were happening in my life that I was going through at the time, you know. So I, it, it, NES, the N Nintendo Entertainment System, is always going to be so fond, you know, in, in my memories. I'm always going to love it. I still got mine sitting in storage. I got a couple hundred games for it, you know. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Just, I really love it. Um, but I'm going to wrap it up because I just hit 25 minutes. My last couple of videos kind of gone a little bit longer than I, than usual. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of getting back in the swing of things after not having done them for a while. But, all right, let me wrap this up, guys. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I encourage you to go check out my other videos. If you do enjoy them, you know, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the little bell notification so you, you'll be the first to know if I do post anything else. Uh, you know, like this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, you know, leave something down in the comments. Tell me what are your some of your uh, favorite NES games, and we kind of you know talk about that. So uh, I will hopefully uh, you know keep keep these videos coming at a, at a regular pace. Uh, you know, just depending on life, what's going on, and you know we're coming up to the holidays, so that that's going to eat up a lot of time as well. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next video.